uh, sponsors and co-sponsors of this bill, and we appreciate them being here and uh, giving their support. As the title suggests, the bill was written to ensure fair competition in women's sports. Athletics play an important part, uh, role to many of our students, parents, and families. Sports help students learn so much beyond their traditional bookwork. The time put into sports, practice on and off the field, tournaments, team building exercises, this is immeasurable. At the heart of it all, though, is competition. Like so many parents whose kids are student athletes, we want to make sure fair competition is maintained. We wouldn't put a JV team up against a varsity team, and we don't have men's teams play against women's teams. It would be unfair to our students if we ignored some of the biological realities that have measurable impacts on outcomes in sports. This bill sets out to fix those loopholes. And I'm going to turn this over to uh, two of my colleagues that have worked very, very hard on this bill. Uh, uh, Joyce Kravick. Yes, sir. Joyce. Good morning. Thank you all for being here. Uh, like my colleague noted, the Fairness in Women's Sports Act is needed legislation. And even though there, we have a few examples of this already having taken place, uh, it's important that we establish fair standards um, for, our, for our women's sports. Uh, to do that, the bill will do a couple of things, and I'll go through a little part, parts of the bill. It requires that athletic teams or sports designated for women shall not be open to male students. Teams or sports for men would not be open to women unless there is no comparable female team for a particular sport and the sport is not a contact sport. In the case that a student is deprived of an athletic opportunity or subject to retaliation as a result of violation of these new designations, they may use that violation as a cause of action for remedies. This is common sense legislation. It's about ensuring fair competition in women's sports. A new statewide poll shows that 70% of North Carolinians oppose biological males competing against women and fem all females in sports, girls and women. Uh, forcing girls to play against biological males is denying female athletes fair competition. There are physical advantages that cannot be ignored. Um, Title IX was created specifically to provide fairness for women in sports. And at this time, I'll turn the podium over to my colleague, Senator Vicki Sawyer. Thank you. Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm gonna provide a little different perspective. I mean, to look at me now, you may not realize that I grew up playing athletics, but athlete, um, female athletes are very dear to my heart. See, for me in Winston-Salem, a typical high school day was to wake up at 5 a.m., travel to Wake Forest, do a free clinic hosted by Coach Lash, study all day at school, then travel to a field or court to practice or play a game. Like many young women athletes, I lived to score that basket, a match one, or to hit that final home run. Now those very sports that fostered and guided my development as a young woman are under attack. When we talk about men identifying as a woman to play in sports, we so hear about how we are accommodating their feelings. But there is a big part missing from that conversation. What about the woman? What I don't hear about is the physical health of a young woman when she chooses to play sports. See, for our bodies, at that time of our life, we're just learning what's going on. For biological women in high school, we cringe when that coach hands us that first pair of white sliding pants. We miss the game-winning shot because we had to run to the bathroom in an embarrassing moment. Or we wake up with terrible cramps on the main championship game. Now, I know that is uncomfortable to hear, especially to you men, but as a female athlete, that's what we deal with. And when you invite a man to come and compete against me, you're saying, not only do I have to deal with those biological issues, I now have to work harder. I have to lift more weights. I have to run faster. I have to be stronger. I have to be at a disadvantage. 
because they feel like they can play with me. When have we stopped talking about that? Why are we putting women's sports under attack? This bill is not against anybody, but it is for all women. It is for the health and safety and for the ability for a woman to wear that medal on her chest after she won the swimming competition or that woman to be able to slide into home plate after they won the state championship. You hear from some folks that there's only a handful of athletes in North Carolina that this isn't a big deal. Ask that young woman in Cherokee County if this is a big deal as she was slammed to the floor when a volleyball hit her neck and she went to the hospital. Is that not a big deal? I say that it is. We are grateful to have two coaches with us today to talk about how big of a deal this is. I would like to introduce Coach Sylvia Hatch, the head coach of the women's basketball team at UNC Chapel Hill for over 30 years, winning an NCAA championship in 1994. She was an assistant coach of the USA's 1988 Olympics women's basketball team that won an Olympic gold medal. She has been inducted in seven athletic Hall of Fames, wow, um, including the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame and was National Coach of the Year for several years. Please come on up. We'd love to hear your remarks. And um, the senator back here would like to note that you also went to the University of Tennessee. But <laughs> <laughs> Oh, me. <laughs> And when we won the gold medal, I was with Kay Yow, all you NC State folks. So uh, Kay was one of my best friends, even though we were at uh, opposite schools. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Uh, and first of all, I support transgender athletes, okay, their right to gender identity as they see fit. However, competitive sport is one of the few places in our society where sex differences matter. Those differences, men's greater strength, size, speed, and muscle mass, men's larger hearts, lungs, hands, feet, and skulls, women's greater body fat, women's and men's differences, distribution, distribution of their body fat and lean muscle mass and much, much more. Results and performance advantages for men in almost every sport. Therefore, to ensure that female athletes have access to fair and safe competition, trans girls and trans women at any age should not be eligible to compete head-to-head -head against females. Separate sports categories facilitate inclusion. They have always been created to provide more people with a chance to enjoy competitive victories. Without the two sex categories, we would never have known about or celebrated the greatness female athletes of all time, including by no means limited to Billie Jean King, Martina Navratilova, Mary Lou Ratton, or Peggy Fleming. All would have been defeated by and overshadowed by countless male players and lost in history. Just recently, in 2022, the World Aquatics, which is the governing body for swimming and diving and other water sports, acknowledged the differences between women and men with a rule change that excludes people who have experienced male puberty from women's events. In 2023, just a few weeks ago, uh, World Athletics, the governing body for track and field and all running events, followed suit. And this is on the Olympic level. In 1972, Title IX was passed. We just celebrated on June 23rd last year the 50th anniversary. 
I was a sophomore in college playing volleyball and basketball. I played after that. I did go to the University of Tennessee, and I was the JV coach. Pat Summit was the head coach, and I was the JV coach there at Tennessee. After that, I went to Francis Marion University for 11 years and then to the University of North Carolina for 33 years. I played and coached for all 50 years of Title IX. The purpose of Title IX was to make sports fair and equal. Females having to compete against transgenders is not fair and equal. Is there a place for transgenders in sports? Yes, there is, but it's a separate category. Speaking as a coach, it's not a level playing field. It's just not a level playing field. Is there a place for transgenders? And I, I am not against transgenders, but there is a place, and it is a completely separate category. In closing, I want to say I strongly urge support for the Fairness in Women's Sports Act for the sake of fairness, safety, opportunity, and the rights of women. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Thank you so much, Coach. Um, we have another coach here with us this, eve this morning, Coach Sherry Norris, spent her entire coaching career at Chapel Hill High School, coaching basketball, come on up, volleyball, and my beloved softball. Um, she was inducted into several halls of fame, was awarded as one of the NCHSAA's top 100 coaches to remember, and Associated Press Coach of the Year. Congratulations for your accolades, and welcome to the podium. Um. Just to tell you a little bit about myself, it has been dedicated my entire career to promoting sports for girls. I went to a small high school in Bladen County, Bladenboro High School no longer exists, and there were no teams for girls. If a girl was to participate in extracurricular activities, you had the option of being a majorette, if you were in the band, or being a cheerleader. I was a cheerleader. When I transferred after graduating from Southeastern Community College to Carolina, Title IX came into effect. And ever since that time, I have been an advocate for girls being able to compete in sports. Uh, it was a godsend for females, for the athletes. It was an opportunity that impacted young girls' lives and young women. It allowed them to compete in sports because you see when you compete in sports, you gain a special skill set which had been limited to men in the past. You learn how to work on a team, what it means when you have been knocked down to pick yourself up and how you regroup and you move ahead and you plan a new strategy. These are life skills that are really are important to young women. I believe that people have the right to make the choice about their own bodies. However, when it begins to impact others adversely, a line needs to be drawn. Transgender participation in middle school and high school sports should be denied. It is not an equal playing field. The difference in strength and the size of males when compared to females creates a lot of advantages, and it is a safety issue that needs to be addressed. I taught elementary physical education for 37 years, and in those 37 years, I, we always administered physical fitness tests, and the President's Council on Fitness distinguishes the difference between male and female. When we tested those children, they were graded and um, according to the standards that were set for their sex. There was a difference. There was a higher strength difference for boys versus girls. A good example of something that has happened in the state of North Carolina, and someone has already mentioned, but I'm going to talk about it again, is in the sport of volleyball. I coached volleyball. I coached over a thousand matches. Um, and in that time, you begin to realize the difference it makes in that sport, the strength factor and the size factor. In volleyball, men, when they play, they play on an eight-foot net. Girls 
play on a seven foot four net. If you're in a co a co-ed league, it's an eight foot net. And that is so that it protects the female athletes. But the problem with that is that they are once again delegated to a support position and cannot play a true volleyball game. In the fall, when uh, a six foot male transgender athlete played on a team, at, uh, he played or she played at Highlands High School, went up and spiked a ball. And it hit the female athlete from Hiawasa High School and knocked her to the floor. That individual suffered a concussion and is still suffering the long-term effects of that con concussion with different symptoms and has neurological damage. After the injury, the school board voted five to one that in the future, when Hiawasa was to play Highlands High School, they would forfeit games. And the reason they did that is to protect the athletes, for the safety of the athletes. My problem with that is, yes, we should be concerned about their safety. But let's think about the implications. What does that mean for other girls on the teams, other players? They took a stand, and it was the correct stand to protect them. But at the same time, it eliminates them from being able to possibly be conference champions, to play in a state playoff, all because they are allowing a male to play on a girl's team, and it should not happen. Uh, a transgender athlete changes the game if allowed to play with the female team. Playing on the lower net will allow them to dominate and just change outcomes tremendously. We need to stay true to the Title IX legislation and not set female athletics back 50 years. And so I thank you for this opportunity to speak in support of this bill today. And thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm grateful that our House counterparts came in. Representative Balcom had been the spearhead behind this, so, um, but duty uh, serves. Would you like to say a few words before we open up for questions? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. Sorry a little late. We just ran a little over there. So I'm Representative Balcom. Thank you all for uh, being here today. Um, sorry I'm a little late. Um, thank you for all my colleagues here for supporting the Fairness in Women's uh, Sports Act. This, this bill is important to me because girls and athletics are important to me. Um, their safety, their opportunity, and their rights to compete on a level playing field, those things matter to me. Girls should, be, should not be benched in their own sports. And as an athlete, I, I played sports my entire life. As an aunt to competitive high school female athletes, I'm concerned about their safety. The job of the legislation is to make laws to prevent harm and not just respond to it. This legislation is important because it protects the rights, the opportunities, and the safeties of these girls. Thank you. All right. Now it's time to turn over the mic to you guys. So we would open up for any questions. Yes, sir. Hey, Brian. Um, well, you know, just like any piece of legislation, it starts out as an idea and it moves through the committee process. That was not the intent of it, and if that's what it does, we'll fix it through the committee process. When it says girls, would that be the other way about that? Well, again, we can always amend. So South Iredale High School in my local, we had a fantastic uh, female who was a kicker, and she did an awesome job. And we, there was not the intention of this legislation to disallow that from occurring, so we will absolutely fix it in the future. Yes, ma'am. Um, it's bill filing deadline. <laughs> yeah. Any next question? Okay. Very good. Oh, Laura, come on, Laura. No, uh, you almost, I almost got out of here without a question from you. What you got? Yes, ma'am. Yes. They do. <laughs> by going to their high school and signing up for sports and playing with the sex that, biological sex that they are, that they are. 
<laughs> I'm not sure I understand your question. Um, you <laughs> I'm not trying to be coy. I really don't understand how this is not saying you as a student can't play a sport. This is just saying women play against women. So I heard from, or I didn't hear from, but I saw on Twitter, which we all get our news from apparently, um, that there are about 15 transgender athletes uh, that are uh, participating in sports. Uh, like Representative Balcom said, this is a um, idea or a bill to make sure that Cherokee County doesn't happen again. Just because it's not happening right now at this moment doesn't mean it won't happen in the future. And again, I'm a female athlete who's played co-ed sports before. I know how strong guys are. I've played co-ed softball. I have coached co-ed spots softball it is really scary sometimes when you're out there playing with guys and if you're not the top of your level you can get hurt and this is just protecting young female athletes not only their physical protection but their ability to win that championship i got one more question who you got anybody else okay yes sir Uh, nothing. I, I mean, it's again, it's bill filing deadline. It's the time to get things done. And this is something that's been a passion of mine ever since I've been here. This isn't like I just woke up last night and said, hey, let's make sure that women can play on women's teams. That's not it. This is something that's been a long time coming. And we're just excited to get this bill across the finish line to protect women. Thank you all for coming out today. I appreciate your support. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Do you want to come to the microphone if it's okay? And this will be the final. Sorry, I'm a day late and a no, dollar okay. short. But uh, we haven't mentioned this, but this is very important, that a transgender could take away a scholarship from a female. That's right. Okay? As they, if they participate, and they're going to be better, you know, just because of all the things we've talked about today. They're going to be better, and college coaches want to win, and so... A transgender could easily take away a scholarship from a regular, a normal female. Very good point. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all for coming. I don't know what do you mean. Like, what do you mean? The UNC system. I mean, not all universities are in compliance with Title IX.